Hi. But enough about that. I want to show you how I create a tempo map in Reaper for a song that's not steady. We'll start off with a relatively easy example, and then I'll show you a real world piece that I've been working on lately that required a couple more tricks. So first of all, the too long didn't watch version of this is look for this action. SWS move closest grid line to mouse cursor. This allows you to move the grid around freely. And if you know, you know why that's a huge deal. If not, let me show you why. There's a couple setup things. Um, first of all, you need SWS extension. It's free. If you use Reaper, you should just have this installed anyway. It's super useful. Um, of course, donate if you're able. I've donated. Have you? And a couple more setup tips. Uh, first of all, you need your master track visible. Go to View, Master Track. Second, you need your tempo envelope visible. That's right, envelope. So to show the tempo envelope, go to View, Tempo Envelope. Or I've got mine set to Alt-T, so I'll press Alt-T. And that blue line that showed up, that's the tempo envelope. Uh, that's what we'll be editing to make the tempo map. One more thing is the item's time base must be set to time. That's my default, so I'll show you here. Set the item time base to time. That way when you edit the tempo envelope, your item's not stretching around with it, which is what we want right now. We want to make a tempo map. We want to edit the grid to this performance of the piece, and we don't want the piece to stretch around. Next, um, it helps to do this right from the start. Set the meter of your piece. I know this piece is in 3.8. You can do that down here. Or I can double click the first tempo marker and set it right here. OK, the last setup thing I do is I like to have a rough idea of the tempo. I like to just guess first. Uh, there's two ways to do that. I'm going to turn on my metronome. I have a button for it here. I've also got it set to my keyboard. I set it to the number pad asterisk. And I'm just going to guess by sliding this up and down. I've got it in the area, it's about 94. And now we're ready to actually map out the tempo of the song. Here's where that action comes in. I'll show it again. It is SWS, move closest grid line to mouse cursor. Perform until shortcut released. That means I do need to hold my shortcut for this to work. I've got it set to shift semicolon. That's just a key that I was not using for anything else. So when I hold those two keys down, I can move the grid around with my mouse. So what I just do is press play, look for the next beat one. So right now I'm going to start with a rough pass. In this case, that means one tempo marker per measure. Depending on how steady or how rubato your song is, you might need a finer detail, or maybe you can get away with less. Um, I'll show you the next step after this. So right now I'm just getting about every beat one. And so on. I'll fast forward while I finish this. OK, so I'm done. I've got my rough tempo map. Let's listen. OK, 
Okay, now I've got a click and a grid that follows this unsteady recording. It's not perfect yet though, so we might do a finer pass and do every beat now. Let me show you an example. So right off the bat, beat one's a little slower than the rest of the beats. And this one was... See that beat three was a little slow. This one too. Um, you can go in and get as fine as you need to, as fine as you want to. It really depends on your project how fine you need to get. So once you've got it as accurate as you want or need for your project, you're done. That's your tempo map. You have a grid and a click that matches the song you're working with. So you could be done here, but there's a few things that I always do as a next step. Um, I'll show you some of those things and then I'll show you a couple other tricks that help with more advanced examples. So up until now, we have not edited the item at all. We've not edited the timing or stretching of the item, only of the grid underneath. Now in reality, I always do a little bit of editing to the item itself. Um, I'll explain why and show you a couple of tricks I've learned from doing this a lot. So one thing, look at the tempo markers that we have right now. 96.219 BPM. 96.681 BPM. Reaper can handle this just fine. I do worry about other programs. I don't know if other programs can handle tempo uh, to that degree of accuracy. So what I like to do is round them off to the nearest whole number. And I've got a button for that. But if I use it right now with the item's time base on time, it ruins the work that we've done. Uh, it throws off my tempo map, basically. So we need to change the time base. First, I'll show you Reaper's default way of doing that, um, which has been glitchy for me, so I don't actually use it. But I'll show you the concept first, and then I'll show you the way that I actually do use. So Reaper added this recently, a uh, new time base, beats auto stretch at tempo changes, which is what we want. So we'll do that. This is asking if you've already mapped your tempo, which yes, we have. And there, it added stretch markers at each tempo marker. Now what I can do is round those BPMs, and it stretches the item along with it. Um, to show you what it's really doing, I'll give you an extreme example. We'll set the entire song to one constant tempo. And see as I adjust the tempo of the song, now the item does stretch. So it should, even though we've changed it drastically, it should still follow the grid and the beat, the click. Okay, now, so that works nicely, but um, I found a lot of glitchiness with, I think it has to do with undo states. If you know what's going on, please let me know. But I do a couple of undos, and now let's say I want to change this section of the song only. See, I'm I want to change this section, but look over here and over here. Some other spots in the song start stretching. I don't know why. I haven't figured it out, so I actually just avoid this method. And I'll show you what I do use instead. It's good old beats, position, length, rate. With this time base, it'll allow your item to stretch with the tempo or with um, stretch markers. We do need stretch markers as anchor points. Luckily, there's an action for that. It is SWS. Oh, it's not even SWS. It's just media item add stretch markers at project tempo changes. So we'll run that. And with the time base set to beats position length rate, it's effectively the same thing. Now I can change the tempo of certain parts of my song. And it'll, ch it'll change the appropriate section of the item. And I can round my tempo markers like I like to do. And let me show you a real world example of um, why I might do that. 
I needed to create a click track for an orchestra here in San Diego that wants to do a recording from home project. So they needed a tempo mapped click track. And the problem was the reference recording they were using had so much rubato, it was just very, very hard to follow along. So uh, let me set this up really quick with those same actions, that same workflow. And with this proper setup, now I can do whatever I want. Say this section is a little too fast. Yeah, maybe we want it faster than the rest, but not so fast. See, I can change just that section of the song. Maybe this little slowdown right here was just a little too much. I do want it to slow down, but not so much. I'll adjust it there. Maybe this section should be a little more metronomic. We can do that. So that's a, one example of why after mapping the tempo, I might want to stretch my item along with new tempo changes. Now, let me show you a couple of other quick tips. Listen to this song. It's a lot of slow strings, very slow wind instruments. It's hard to hear exactly where the beat is sometimes, not like that harpsichord or not like any piece with um, heavy percussion in it. So here's a little tip that helps with that. It's spectral peaks. You go to options, peaks display mode, show spectral peaks. And now the peaks are showing frequency information. The darker colors are lower frequencies, the, the brighter colors are higher frequencies. And this just gives me a couple little extra clues when I need to find particular beats. Um, of course, it all comes down to doing it by ear, but this helps a little bit. So let's find something. Right there. Let me turn on the click so we hear it better. This was a little late and this was still way late. It sounds like the low instruments were in charge of the beat at that point. And look what we see here. This purple area is low frequency information. So let me just take a guess, see if that's where the beat actually is. Sometimes it helps, sometimes not so much. It does all come down to doing it by ear, but this will give you just a couple more clues to help you work faster. Another quick tip, you can change the range of the tempo envelope. It's, it's right here. Right click on the tempo envelope, go to envelope defaults, tempo envelope range. And see the default is usually 40 to 200. Well, for this piece, that's a little bit useless because it's bottoming out um, near 35, which is under the useful range. So you can adjust the range to something that fits your song better. For this one, I had it from 15 to 80. And it's kind of like zooming in on the tempo envelope, makes it a lot more useful to work with. And the last tip, let me switch to a fresh project for this one, is in reality, I don't usually like my item starting all the way at the beginning of the song. Usually you'll start out something like this. So what I do is trim it down to the actual start on the song, give myself some empty space to work with. I usually am using sheet music to follow along with these kinds of project. Um, so I want my project to sync up with the sheet music, meaning I want this to be measure one, not measure five. You can change that. Go to project settings and change your project start measure. Uh, you got to do a little bit of math here. If the start measure is negative three, then this is measure one. And I've got some empty measures before that that are negative numbers. One more quick tip is with the item time base set to time right now, when I do my tempo mapping, it kind of throws off the position of that item. That's what this time base is for. I, um, time base beat position only. It'll hold the position, the anchor point of measure one.
but it doesn't actually stretch the timing of the item. It just anchors the position, which is useful for that first um, step where you want to just map out the tempo really quick. Okay, that's how I create a tempo map in Reaper, especially uh, with this workflow where there's a lot of rubato, lots of tempo changes within the piece. Have fun. Good, Good luck. luck.